Hello, everyone. Do you believe that a simple cup of coffee can change the world? Well, in my professional life, um, in the last 10 years, I've been involved with coffee, and it certainly has changed my life a lot, and I'm here to share some of that. Also, as an Italian, coffee has influenced my entire life, my first memory about coffee is when I was six years old. I was in a blue uniform with a backpack on my shoulders, walking to primary school in my town, Como, in Italy, and smelling the aroma of freshly roasted coffee from a small ro local roaster. And that stayed until today in my memory as a great experience of coffee. Of course, when you talk about coffee with Italian people, that can lead to hours and days of passionate uh, conversations, but we're gonna try to keep it short and uh, focused today. And there is a lot happening around coffee beyond the simple cup that we see and that we drink. So coffee drinking for certain people can be a moment of relaxation, of reflection, self-reflection. Sometimes we like to call it caffeinated meditation. In other instances, drinking coffee is more social. It really helps to gather people, friends, and family around a cup of coffee, and sometimes really facilitates great business decisions. Coffee sometimes can also lead to crazy ideas that in the world of arts, and politics can change history. Did you know that the group of people who stormed the Bastille in Paris and led to the French Revolution started their actions in a coffee shop called Café de Foix? So, yes, I believe a simple cup of coffee can change the world. And um, for me, um, this has taken the shape um, of a perfect cup of coffee that I'd like to call the positive cup. But before we dive into the positive cup, I'd like to talk about the principle of responsibility. So for me, responsibility is uh, about a balance between mindfulness, being aware of the context and the implications of things we do, and meaningfulness which is about having values and a purpose that drives what we do, that drives the change that we want to make um, in the world. But it's difficult sometimes to reconcile responsibility of an individual with the direction that a company wants to take. And I am happy to say that I have found that balance in my career and in my life. Now, as I said, it's never about a, single, a sing, simple cup of coffee. There's a lot of responsibility attached. And why? Because it touches so many people in the world. Do you know that yesterday, 74% of Canadians drank a cup of coffee? Do you know that over 80% of Canadians last week had at least a cup of coffee as well? But there is more millions of people who are affected by coffee in places that we may not see so often. It's a source of livelihood for millions of people in different continents, going from the Americas, South and Central America, to Africa and Middle East and Asia as well. And I'd like to share a couple of experiences I had the privilege to have in my past 10 years. First one is in Costa Rica. I was visiting a coffee farm in Costa Rica where a small family made by husband, and wife, and son was running a coffee farm. And what took my attention in that visit was something surprising. It was a pig. This family, through one of those programs, training programs and education programs that coffee industry can bring to them, learned how the pig could generate biogas enough energy to feed the whole household for the whole year. That family is still running on energy made by that pig. Amazing. Also, that farmer discovered what is dragon fruit for the first time through a program that had to do with coffee, 
and started growing dragon fruit and selling it, and that was a great complement to their coffee farm economics. Another example that it really um, was surprising for me was a visit I made in Indonesia, in the region of Bandung, which is not too far from uh, Jakarta. And we were taken with uh, SUVs up in the mountain. As you may know, coffee grows at high altitude, often above 2,000 meters. And as we reached the, that altitude, and I was meant to see a coffee farm, I couldn't see it. Well, all I saw was a forest. So I was wondering, where is the coffee farm? Where is the coffee? Where are the cherries? Well, guess what? They were inside the forest. And this has been going on for years with this farming community, where coffee was perfectly mixing in a complementary way with, um, uh, with the trees. And those trees are protecting from the uh, sunshine, from the wind, and they're helping really to make a significant impact, positive impact on the nature around the coffee that is growing there. This is about, about um, a regenerative agriculture. So how do we make a connection now between what happens in those remote farming areas and where we live and where we consume coffee every day? One of the best ways I've seen in my last, in my last few years is um, in Canada. As you know, we have a lot of forest, but there is a need to plant more trees in this forest. And so I have seen a long-term commitment through a donation to help replanting those trees, and then a personal involvement, myself and my colleagues, to sometimes take that action and even invite other stakeholders to take that symbolic action of planting trees because it raises the awareness, it makes the connection globally with those areas where companies and individuals invest in millions of new trees to help keeping that balance. So coffee can be a force for good, and it is important to make those connections between where we consume it and where it's grown. Do you know that coffee production can actually disappear? In the next few years, by 2050, about half of the areas that are today producing coffee could be gone. So that's why I feel, we feel, the responsibility to protect coffee production and coffee culture. And so it's important that we leverage what I was mentioning as um, regenerative agriculture to do that. Because about half of the carbon impact from coffee ecosystem comes from the way we source coffee. So it's very important that we can apply those practices and not only continue generating additional volumes of coffee for our consumers, but also at the highest quality and with the best sustainable impact uh, possible. So what happens after we drink a cup of coffee? Well, very often there is packaging involved. And what do we do with that packaging? In my personal experience, I've seen one material being used, which is particularly important because it preserves the freshness and the quality of coffee, and that's aluminum. Now, aluminum turns out to be also infinitely recyclable, and from an energy standpoint, it's also sustainable. But how do we make sure that consumers who are drinking those billions of cups of coffee are disposing the packaging in the right way? Well, it's about partnerships. It's about local and international partnerships. I've been involved in many of those. And I, here in Canada, have seen how the collaboration with authorities, and particularly municipalities, is key. Because the private sector, corporations can develop solutions, but they have to be worked together with the public system so that they can be optimized and um, be, being used at the most. So that collaboration between the private solution and the public collection system is key. Another key element uh, in this responsibility is transparency. I haven't seen a better way to push the agenda to make progress in the area of sustainability than B Corp certification. B Corp organization has values that I really share and my organization shares where you have to give full transparency to where you stand and what you want to achieve in the areas of sustainability, 
in the areas of communities, in the areas of employees and other stakeholders. And this certification really allows us to know where we stand and know where we want to go and share that with the communities. So, in summary, um, I feel engaged after so many years in this industry, but at the same time, I feel the responsibility to, to continue driving that positive cup so that a lot of friends and family can enjoy their great moments together. A lot of dreamers can make new inventions as they sip a cup of coffee. And a lot of change makers can come up with those changes that can change the world, all starting with a simple, great cup of coffee. Thank you.